I think we're live. I'm just going to double check that we are, in fact, live before I say anything. Uh, daft. No. Yes. If anyone uh, is watching, let us know if you can perhaps see and hear us. This is uh, the second, I think, of Case UK's. There we are. I can see myself. If anybody else can see us, uh, do <laughs> let us know where you are listening in from in the wee live chat box that you can see there. But I think we're good. I think we're good. Stuart uh, and myself are here. and Welcome to Case Filters UK's second ever Sunday session where we chat with pro photographers and partners. And uh, it's good to have you. I'm seeing Stephen in the live chat there. Yes, yeah, so it looks like uh, we are good to go. Do let us know where you're joining us from. Ali is in there as well now. Hi, Ali. Good. All right. Just checking all the basics that we're here. Uh, my name's Ruth Taylor. I'm going to be um, hosting these sessions for Case Filters UK over the next, ooh, I think it's actually seven or eight months at this stage. And I am here tonight with pro photographer Stuart McLennan. Stuart, you're very welcome. It's very good to meet you as well. Oh, You've right. got a syringe about to come into your head, Stuart. I've just realized. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's not a ray gun or any description. It's something yeah, yeah. Else. It's the home gym down here, yeah. That's uh, what it is. It's the barbell, so, man. You're, yeah, you're a better person than I am. Uh, Stuart is a award-winning landscape photographer based down in the Lake District uh, here in the UK. And we'll come back to Stuart in just a moment. But just of all, uh, first of all, rather, a couple of items of housekeeping. I'm seeing everybody launching into the chat already, so you obviously know how this works. But there is a live chat on YouTube. And if you do want to um, let us know any questions as we go through, the next 25, 30 minutes or so for Stuart. Just pop those in as we go and I'll just uh, ask those as we go through. That'd be absolutely fantastic. There is a wee bit of a delay just with the system we're using 10 to 20 seconds or so. So if you ask something and I don't pick up on it straight away, it isn't personal. We will get to that uh, as we go. And uh, finally, um, this session should be available just after we finish on the Case Filters UK YouTube page. So if you want to rewatch anything or you want to share that with uh, your friends or colleagues, Colleagues, anything like that, you can do that. So there we go. That I think is the housekeeping. Stuart, it's very good to have you. As I said, you are a, a landscape photographer based down in the Lake District here in the UK, and uh, beautiful images. I've been looking at your your stuff over the past couple of weeks, and uh, very much looking forward to getting to know you over the next 15, 20 minutes or so. Time's getting shorter as I'm saying that. Um, so let's launch right into it, Stuart. We've got 10 questions and we'll take questions as well as they come in. So we will just get straight off, I think, with the first one. And just about yourself, Stuart, I know you're born, I think born and bred uh, in the Lake District. Why don't you tell us a wee bit just about yourself and how you got started in photography? Okay, so I'm uh, 38. I'm a professional landscape photographer, and I also run a gallery uh, in Keswick, which is in the sort of heart of the Lake District. Um, I'm pretty sports mad, I guess. Uh, before sort of getting into photography, I'm a very keen sort of sportsman. I did, uh, I played to international level at badminton when I was a junior. Wow. Uh, played a lot of golf, uh, a lot of football, rugby, that sort of thing. Um, but in terms of photography, I, I'm, I guess, I suppose, relatively new. I've only been uh, doing it since 2016. Um, but I took up photography really as a, a bit of a sort of stress reliever more than anything else. Because mm -hmm. um, even though I'm based in the Lake District, uh, I'm quite sort of ashamed to say I didn't actually know that much about my sort of local surroundings until I yeah. took up photography because uh, I spent most of my life on football and rugby pitches. So, uh, so yeah, back in sort of early 2016, um, I was going through a bit of a hard time at work, a lot of stress, working shifts, and also my young son was going through a, a, an autism diagnosis. So uh, I was looking for something just to sort of take my, my mind off that. And uh, a family member was a, who's also a keen photographer, he'd, he'd always been suggesting to me to take up photography. And uh, my interest hadn't really been pricked enough to, to start with it until that point. Um, mm -hmm. But I started doing a bit of fell walking and uh, suddenly realised I've got this amazing landscape on my doorstep and, you know, I really hadn't sort of fully appreciated it and I started taking pictures. And, um, you know, before I knew it, my sort of, competitive side I guess sort of <laughs> um 
I wasn't happy basically with just taking sort of snapshots. I wanted to learn more about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking pictures and that sort of thing. And, you know, just kind of sort of snowballed from there really to the you know, point where I'm at now, I guess. And what you're at now, obviously you've got your own gallery, I believe down in Keswick, is that right? Yeah. yeah. How's that been going for you over the last, of, well, I mean, obviously lockdown, Mark, whatever it is, I think Mark <laughs> three down in England, has, has it been a struggle? It's not been too bad be simply because the the gallery, because it's in Keswick, which is, you know, very much a tourist town, mm. um, it's very much driven by tourist trade. So the, the funny thing with this, well, not the funny thing, I guess, but this pandemic, um, the sort of peak periods have actually coincided with the, with the quieter periods in the gallery. So it's sort of, the the pandemic sort of eased a little bit in the summer when the gallery is at its most busy and mm. then obviously we're into lockdown in the middle of winter now this is traditionally the time where there's a, a bit of a fall off in trade anyway so mm. i've not been affected by it too much on on that front i mean it's it, it has affected me more on the sort of uh it, workshop front than anything else I've, I've had to sort of either cancel or reschedule a lot of uh, workshops because of it but the yeah. gallery itself it, it isn't too bad good um Stuart I've been ha having a wee scour through your uh, your website and your your social media feeds and all the rest of it and you know some beautiful landscape images very serene I'm noticing even in some of the shots where oh, it's obviously goodness. quite stormy um you still manage to make things you look pretty serene do you have favorite shooting conditions and and what are they and, and why are they those conditions uh, my my photography's had to change quite a lot because of this this gallery. Um, so the, I have a little bit of a sort of conflict a lot of the time because my sort of personal favourite uh, conditions to shoot in is more sort of stormy, uh, mm. dramatic sort of conditions, more like you'd see on maybe the Isle of Skye, like uh, that sort of thing. But um, since opening the gallery, I've had to sort of tailor my photography more to the sort of serene calm sort yeah. of stuff because it's it's more what people want to buy in that mm -hmm. shop and even those you know as a photographer we have our sort of preferences to shoot in that doesn't always translate to whether it'll actually sell so um yeah definitely favor more sort of stormy dramatic conditions mm -hmm. but that doesn't always equate to being commercially you're successful. in the commercial world yeah you're right it's one of those things if you had if you had you know not to earn money what would your ideal thing would be to go out and and shoot kind of stormy conditions the more wild side oh, of things yeah, yeah. yeah definitely definitely yeah. Be yeah before i took the gallery on it all you know i i would be constantly going out in you know really mucky weather and you know driving rain and all that sort of stuff because really i mean 90 percent of the time that's what the lake district is like you know that you <laughs> see you know idyllic pictures of calm lakes and all that mm. sort of stuff the reality is 90% of the time it, it's stormy and rainy. and that, you know, That's really I, interesting because you're right, I wouldn't have guessed that based purely on, you know, looking through the images available, you know, in your gallery, I would have thought mm. lakes serene, like you say, glassy, no. glassy lakes everywhere. <laughs> Definitely not. It's what the no, people want no. to see. No, it's, it's, I mean, c certainly where I live near the coast anyway, on the sort of fringes of the National Park, it, it, it's definitely a lot more sort of stormy mm. and changeable. As you move further inland towards sort of Keswick and Penrith and the Oldswater area, it's a little calmer just because it's you know further inland. But um, but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely more changeable it's than it looks in those pictures anyway. Yeah. Uh, a couple of questions, uh, Stuart. Andrew is asking, does running the gallery stop you getting out as much as you want to? Um, it I mean, can do it. Need to go out and actually, you know, get images to to, to keep in there. It, it, it can do at times. Um, there's definitely times when I'm sit, sitting in the shop and looking at some amazing conditions out the window. Nice. And, and I know I, I, I'd love to just drop everything and run out the door. Yeah. But, um, you know, the minute you do that, you know that you've probably lost a, you know, a big printer or something. So it, it can do a little bit. But uh, what I would say is that during the off season for the gallery is it, coincides with the sort of peak season for photography so yeah. autumn winter i can get out with the camera a lot sure. more 
So it works. We've, I mean, Andrew's asking a similar question. He said, do you find balancing customer requirements of print difficult against your own personal desires uh, to shoot the images that you want? I think you, you've yeah. kind of answered that with, you know, you you prefer the stormy season, but, the, the, yeah. you know, the, the customers, they prefer the serenity there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and uh, besides, you know, photography, do you have any other hobbies that you prefer or not prefer? I shouldn't say prefer anything else that you like to get out and do, or is photography your kind of all encompassing passion? Uh, it since I took it up, yeah, it has sort of become that. I, I'm I'm kind of a, a very much a sort of person of extremes. I'll I'll either do, you know, I'll do things to the point of burnout almost, and then just give them up and start something new. So. Um, I, I want to get back into playing golf um, outside of photography, but the last two or three years with opening the gallery, that's just took up so much time that it hasn't really been practical to do anything else. But um, yeah, I'll probably move back into playing golf at some point quite soon, I would say. But uh, as I said at the start of this, I'm mad keen on sports. So I'm, if I'm not doing it, I'm certainly watching it anyway. So yeah. yeah. There's always that. Well, I say there's always that. There's not always that just now, I suppose. The, um, <laughs> well, there's still football, I guess. I, I'm a, I'm a um, mad Liverpool supporter. I used to uh, have a season ticket there. So, uh, so yeah, well, I watch loads and loads of football. Yeah, fantastic. All right, well, listen, when it comes to photography, um, do you have any inspiration that comes from maybe non-photographers, well, photographers as well, but maybe painters, musicians, anything like that when it comes to your own kind of artistic take on on your photographs or is it, does it purely come out of your own your own head and what you see and you're just maybe inspired by you know by the conditions or are there, are there other people in the mix that you know have inspired um, it's it, it's a funny one in <laughs> inspiration because you you sort of it can get a little bit confused with you you, you don't want to go down the road of sort of copying someone's style or what mm. many many photographers that i appreciate their work but i've I've never sort of set out to sort of, um, yeah. call, you know, replicate that style, if it were. Sure. But, um, I mean, there's several. Uh, Paul Gallagher's one. Uh, my friend Neil Bunnell, who I run workshops with, he's another. Um, Julian Calverley. Any, any of those guys who, you know, have a bit of mood and drama in their images, That th those are the sort of styles that I tend to sort yeah. of... Um, appreciate more i guess yeah, but, you're inspired uh, but you don't go out to actually replicate that that same kind of stuff it's just you know inspiration no no i i, I just i mean my sort of approach uh, generally all i'm trying to do is just replicate what i saw so in that sense it's probably more of a sort of traditional classic sort of approach i guess um yeah. but the one thing i always want to do is i want to try and shoot in conditions that are quite dramatic i guess so I'm not having to sort of inject a style onto the image. It's, sure. it's already sort of we'll go out and find it naturally. Yeah. Um, yeah. A question: Do you ever get photography burnouts? Um, I wouldn't say burnout. I mean, I, I'm I love my photography. Don't get me wrong, but I, I can quite happily put the camera down for two or three weeks if I need to. I, I don't sort of ever feel the the need to sort of be out constantly taking pictures. I, I probably don't suffer from burnout too much in that sense. But um, no, I, th I think it's good that if you do sort of feel that, then, you know, you should put the camera down and maybe find something else, mm. you know, that pricks your interest just to take your mind away from it and then you can come back fresh to it. Do, do you think, uh, you know, I'm a photographer of burnout, it happens quite a lot. People that maybe do turn commercial, you know, it's turned kind of from their hobby to their job. And, you know, I've heard, you know, a few stories of it. You know, sometimes it kind of seems to suck a wee bit of the of the joy of it away. It it, it has a little bit for me in the, certainly in the in the first 18 months, two years of running the gallery, it did kind of take a little bit of the joy away just because when I took the gallery on, I, I was sort of known for shooting certainly less cliched views, if you like. I, I would pretty, my approach was pretty much just go wherever the rest of the people aren't basically um but as, but as time's gone on and then obviously running the gallery there's a requirement to shoot those more sort of uh, cliched views because mm -hmm. that's what people want to buy so I, I had a real sort of dearth of those images in my portfolio so I was aware that I had to really spend a good six months just constantly shooting these sort of places just to build mm -hmm. up the, yeah the portfolio but I'm thankfully i'm coming to the end of that now and i can 
I can kind of return to more sort of personal photography, if you like. Yeah. Mm. Stu, we were chatting uh, earlier on, and I was I was looking earlier at uh, an image you posted. I think it was last week on your Instagram feed, and it was a, a comparison, a side by side shot of um, two. Well, it was a landscape shot. One shot had some you know lovely little clouds in the sky. The other one didn't have any at all. And you said down below in your caption that you were trying out the uh, skies. Is it sky replacement software, yeah. something like that? And obviously, it's not something that you're really a fan of, and you're you're very honest about that. Do you have a particular take? And I pretty much know what you're going to say. But when it comes to post processing, I'm guessing you're very much um, of the you know faithful to what you've seen camp. Um, I am. Uh, I think the post that you're referring to when I was mentioning about sky replacements, I was just a little concerned that because. It's so easy now with that tool that even for sort of beginners who maybe are less proficient in post-processing, they can get a really realistic result in five or ten minutes. Now, if you put that in the hands of people who really know what they're doing with mm. post-processing, you could be quite easily trotting out images that are, you know, complete fakes, but no one would be able to tell the difference. So it's it is a bit of a sort of rocky ground that, but. I mean, from my own point of view, I'm really just trying to sort of produce a realistic version of what I, I saw out in the field. Mm -hmm. If people are going to use sky replacement and stuff like that, I mean, it's it's not my cup of tea and something I'll, I'll ever use for anything serious anyway. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I think the key, like a lot of things in photography, is just integrity. If you're going to use it, then you just you should perhaps just be upfront and honest about it. There's... Yeah. I mean, I won't shoot anyone down for using it or anything, but you mm. you should be honest if you've used it, I think. Um, what about things like cloning in and out? If you see tiny distractions in your landscape shots, you know, that you know could otherwise be a beautiful, big, grand, clean shot, would you <laughs> take something out? Or if it, you... I'm probably a, a, a bit more relaxed with that. I mean, if it's, you know, if, it, if it's an integral part of the, the scene and it was there, then... I'm, I probably wouldn't clone it out, but if it's something Are we like telegraph poles sticking up in the yeah, something like that, or you know, Chris Packett in the foreground, something, something <laughs> that if, something if, I've I've be... <laughs> yeah. if I've identified it in the field as something that I I really want to get rid of, but I physically can't go and get rid of it, um, then I, I've no real issue with, with cloning it out, to be honest. But generally. I'll try and avoid it if I can. Yeah, generally try and just show what you've seen as opposed yeah. to anything anything grander than that. Um, you say you like being out and about in stormy conditions. Now, this one might not be related to it, but do you have any particular memorable moments in your photography career, or maybe not your career, just photography in general, um, either uh, in the past since you've turned commercial or, or any time? Uh, the, the one that sticks out is probably the – I won the Sunday Times Award in Landscape Photography of the Year a couple of years ago with a, an image from Buttermere, well, from Haystacks, which looks down on Buttermere. And um, it's probably the only time in the, the entire time I've been taking pictures that I could genuinely sense that I was looking at something special. Mm. And, you know, when I'm out with the camera, generally I try, you know, I, I'm... I won't sort of sit rooted to the spot. I'm quite happy to sort of move around and explore and see if I can find something better. But it, it's the one time I've been out where I could see what was happening in front of me and I just didn't budge for about two and a half hours. I knew that something good was going to happen and, uh, and yeah, I just waited it out. And then about half an hour after taking the image, the, the black cloud that's in that picture, it absolutely poured down and I got absolutely drowned. But... <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's the one time that I've just that stuck in my head that I, yeah. you know I was like, yeah, there's something special is going to happen special. here. I mean, talking of competitions, are you are you of the camp that would kind of go out and try and shoot for a competition, or are you more of there's a competition coming up? I think I've got a, an image that would suit this quite well. I know. No, some I, ne I, no I, ne I never. Um, I mean, I've I've been quite fortunate. I've had you know the reasonable amount of success in competitions but i've never specifically gone out to shoot an image for a competition because mm. you know the the way that the these competitions are judged and you know the, they use different judging panels every year different people with different tastes and, and styles and whatnot you know if you if you start shooting 
for a panel of judges, then you, you've kind of lost the point of why you're going out in the first place. I, I just, I take pictures for myself and, you know, when a competition comes around, I just pick my favourite ones and put them in. And if, you know, if they get picked, then great. But... Um, a question come in. Does Stuart have a location that is his photography nemesis or one that he's yet to get the shot that he wants from it? Oh, yeah, quite a few. That's a really good question. <laughs> <Quite> a few. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've I've got most of what I wanted from the lakes, but the Isle of Skye, I've been to Skye four or five times now, and every time I've had absolutely horrendous weather. <laughs> and I think I'm just sort of cursed, to be honest. No, you're not cursed. The, the no, cursed. No, no, I know it's completely normal <laughs> up there, but um, I think – the reason I thought that was because I've gone at different times as well. I've not sort of mm. gone at the same time and got the same weather. I've gone at all times of the year. And um, yeah, I would say probably sky's probably high on my list to, you know, get, I've had four or five attempts at it and I've barely come away with anything that I would, you know, I, that I'm happy with anyway, you know. I think it's possibly why photographers relocate because, you know, it's it's so hard to actually come up one day and you know, get the weather you want. It's one of those things you yeah. get the window it might be it's, clearing or, or the weather looks promising, so you, you run out. It's uh, it's part of the reason why I don't actually, as as time's gone on, I, I, I do less travelling now than I've ever done really for photography because every time I come away from them places, you, you're very aware that you, you might only have three, four, five days. Mm. And, you know, if the weather doesn't play ball, you, it almost feels like a wasted trip and... Um, you know, you don't have that advantage of someone being local who can see yeah. the weather patterns and, you know, be a bit more selective. So it's part of the reason I do less travelling now. Yeah, well, I mean, that leads us very nicely on to what I was going to ask you. I mean, obviously, you, you do shoot in Scotland as well as uh, down there in the lakes. Do you have a favourite location um, that you go to uh, maybe around the lakes? Maybe not. Maybe somewhere else that you've been. been. Uh, favourite one in the lakes definitely was Dale. Um, part... <laughs> I mean, partly because it's it's only five, ten minutes drive from my house, but um, it's where I spent all my sort of formative time in photography learning and just, you know, I shot the place to death from every different angle and, you know, it, it's sort of close to me because of that. But also because because it's on the near the coast, it's, you don't, it's a very Scottish type of landscape. It's not quite the sort of... Um, sort of gentle idyllic lakes landscape that you probably more associate with um, you know sort of further inland near Keswick so it's it's a bit more dramatic the weather's more changeable yeah. and um, you know it's it's hard work to actually get a good image from there because it's you know the conditions are so challenging a lot of the time so is you it know, one of the popular places one of the places that the visitors go to a lot or is it more of a kind of a I mean I, I actually don't know the lake districts at all is it, is it <laughs> <laughs> hard to get to and one for locals or is it more of a, a, a honey pot spot it's not hard it, it's i mean it's uh there isn't anywhere in the lakes that isn't popular to some degree Compar in comparison with other areas no it doesn't get anywhere near as much traffic as as say like derwent water or rolls water but um it's not that difficult to get to it's 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 longer you know it's a longer drive but it's not difficult to get to but um but yeah that's part of its charm i guess so, you know the, the, the people who do go there are, are you know blown away by it because the you know the the mountains are quite grand as i say it's more of a scottish landscape the mountains are much more dramatic the yeah. much higher mm -hmm. uh, much steeper and it's you know it's, it's just got a very sort of dramatic feel to it is it one that you featured on your youtube channel uh I have, yeah. The first video I did actually was from uh, Wasdale. Mm -hmm. um, I had a good morning that morning. Actually, it's it's uh, it's generally the as I say because it's so close to the coast, you get quite rugged weather. It's quite windy. Mm -hmm. um, but the morning I went there to shoot that video, it was it was flat calm. And I mean, I've been shooting there for five years straight, and mm -hmm. I can count one hand how many times it's it's calm. So uh, yeah, it was a good morning that one. Very good. I've got another question. Uh, I come in on YouTube. Which is your favourite season to shoot in and which season best suits your type of photography? That's from Philly Benita Brook. Um, I would say 
probably winter. Probably <laughs> you you seem like winter, yeah. I like the, yeah. I like the good weather that you've come up with to, to describe, uh, you know. A yeah, trip. I, 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 I think, I mean, the, the standard answer would be autumn, but the, the problem with autumn photography is, is that if you get any kind of rough weather, it can just vanish in two or three days, you know what I mean? So as much as I love the colour and all that sort of stuff, it, it generally it doesn't last very long. And, you know, you, the other thing is you feel very pressured to sort of cram images into quite a short yeah. space of time, whereas with winter you've got a lot longer to shoot in. With, you know, the light generally through the day is very good because the sun's very low um, and the weather's a lot more changeable as well. So probably winter. Fair dues. Um, I saw a beautiful shot on your website that you called the cello. Um, and it's one of the only shots I think I saw in there that you'd maybe describe as more intimate uh, of a kind of a landscape. Do you have a preference, um, you know, grand versus intimate? I mean, I would have said based on, on what I've seen, it's it's more the grand. But then you've talked earlier about the fact that you do shoot a lot, obviously, for the gallery. Um, yeah. so do you have a preference or is it just whatever maybe whatever strikes you and you just you want to take a shot of it? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sort of, yeah, flexible in that sense. I mean, I appreciate all types of landscape photography i mean there's some amazing um photographers out there who do only intimate photography i guess um i'm probably a product of my environment in the you know with living in the lake district it's like you know if you live in sky or glencoe or wherever you know you that's what you photograph because that's what's in front of you but um if i live probably on the coast or, you know, nearer seascapes and stuff like that, I'd probably shoot a lot more intimate um, landscapes. Um, that's not to say that you can't do that where I live, because mm -hmm. obviously you can't. But, um, but, yeah, probably lean towards the sort of bigger, grander landscape, I yeah. guess. But I do like to sort of mix it up from time to time and, and do the odd uh, intimate landscape. Mm -hmm. But generally in the gallery, that, that stuff just wouldn't sell. <laughs> Yeah. I, I wish I, I wish I could put stuff like that on the walls, but it just wouldn't sell. You never know. I mean, that that shot is absolutely beautiful. I really liked that one. Oh, uh, just, it was a rock, the, the the water running down the side of a rock on the beach, and just the way it had carved that shape out. It was very relaxing, shall we say? It was, it was, yeah. it was Oh, I mean, it's serene, uh, as with all your other shots. It was lovely. Um, a final question, actually, Stuart. I can't believe we're a half an hour in uh, already. Do you have a favourite case filter, and what is it and why? Um, probably the polarizer. I mean, I'm used to be quite a, a sort of strong user of grads, but I've slowly sort of moving away from them, to be honest. I mean, the, the case grads that I've got are absolutely fantastic. Um, but with the way cameras are going now, the dynamic range and what you can do in post, they're, they're becoming less of a necessity, I would say. But uh, the polarizer is the one thing that, you know, you can't replicate. Yep. Um, in post and uh, certainly with the case ones with them being magnetic as well mm. and uh, shatterproof yeah yeah definitely the polarizer I would have, say. You ever, have you ever tried have you ever dropped one i haven't no i, I know you can but i just there's something <laughs> there's so, yeah. that's a good thing in your brain that stops there's you doing something that. saying you don't do that and I, yeah i haven't tried them i'm sure they do but uh, no I've, I've i've had a couple of not non-case ones in the past and uh just you just drop it on a rock and that's it it's got a chip in it and it's forever yeah, and the, the, the forever ruined, aren't they? yeah. Yeah, um, fantastic. Stuart, I've mentioned your gallery quite a lot tonight and your YouTube, obviously, page as well. Do you have um, anywhere people can go to find out more about you? I've got the web address uh, for your gallery, your your Facebook, social media. Where, where can people find you? Uh, well, the website's www.lensdistrict.com. That's got on there a little bit about the gallery and information about uh, workshops and prints and all that sort of stuff. Uh, my Instagram handle is just at Stuart McGlennon. Um, Facebook is Stuart McGlennon Photography, and I'm on Twitter at, at Lens District as well. Uh, that's where you can catch me. Fantastic, Stuart. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and letting us uh, know a little bit more about yourself. And it's been really good to meet you as well. Hopefully, we'll chat again another okay. time. Um, and thank you to everybody also that has watched and asked questions as well. We will have this available. I think just just pretty much as soon as it finishes, it'll be available on the YouTube page. So if you want to watch that again, as I said earlier, or if you want to pass on the link, uh, just keep an eye on Case Filters UK's page and you can do that. I will be back 
on, I think, double checking, the 24th, Sunday, the 24th of January. I think that's a fortnight. It is a fortnight today uh, with Alistair Ben. Lots of you will know Alistair Ben, another award winning photographer uh, with Case. So, very much looking forward to that. Hopefully, you can join me for that. Uh, Casefilters.com is a place to go if you do want to have a wee look at who is coming up. I think we've got a Till September, August, September, at least every fortnight is going to be a busy, a busy 2021. So if you want a wee bit of respite uh, from lockdown, a half hour on a Sunday evening, do check that out. You can have a wee look at the list, of what's coming up, pop the dates in your diary. But uh, until the fortnight, have a really good rest of the evening from me, from the Case Filters UK team and from Stuart, I'm sure, uh, as well. Have a great rest of the evening and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Good night. Bye.